Hey everyone, I just wanted to make a video on the passing of Queen Elizabeth II on September the 8th and just the completely radical, unhinged response that we've seen to it. So just to jump straight in, there are, if anyone was watching the, the procession carrying Queen Elizabeth II to Edinburgh, where I'm based, ironically, um, carrying her to, I think it was Holyrood Palace, you, you may have came across a woman, so there's an article in the Metro um, about a woman arrested after holding a sign that said, Abolish the Monarchy. And uh, I won't go too far into the article, it's kind of redundant. But as you can see, we we have a, <laughs> a very classy, elegant woman who... Uh, I mean, you can just smell the soy milk and the veganism just looking at her. So she has green hair. She has a sign holding fuck imperialism, abolish monarchy. And again, you know, abolish monarchy, I think there is an open question there whether the monarchy should be abolished or not. But... She is completely historically illiterate when she writes fuck imperialism. And this is just a, a misapprehension that a lot of people have fallen under in the events after the Queen's death. So just to go to a couple completely odious tweets. So to people outside of the UK, there's a kind of a, a sports um, reporter on Talk Sport called Trevor Sinclair, who wrote a tweet, um, I think maybe about an hour after the news broke that the Queen had passed, and he wrote, Racism was outlawed in England in the 60s, and it's been allowed to, to thrive, so why should black and brown mourn hashtag Queen? And, you know... It, it's just completely deranged. It's, right, I mean, one, what do you mean racism's been allowed to thrive? Are there, does racism exist? Yep, it does. It exists in every culture, it exists definitely within the UK, but when you say allowed to thrive, again, is this some argument that we have institutional racism, that our country is is, is run by some white neo-Nazi cabal that only cares about the interests of white people? Or do you mean, like other people, I would guess more moderate people would argue that, well, our laws lead to unintended consequences that lead to various outcomes depending on one's race. So, there may be outcomes that, again, the un unintended consequences that certain races suffer in some domain. That's perhaps more reasonable, but that does not constitute one willingly allowing racism to thrive. And again, another just really awful, deranged tweet by, I mean, this tweet has went viral, so by the Professor Uju Anya, and she... <laughs> I mean, it's so crass. She writes, I heard the chief monarch of a thieving, raping, genocidal empire is finally dying. May her pain be excruciating. I mean, almost every word of that is completely incoherent. I mean, first of all, this does not sound like a morally just person. If you want someone to experience excruciating pain, at their death, that says much more about your moral character than it does about anyone else's. Only someone that is completely sadistic and maybe even psychopathic could genuinely wish that. But the more, you know, the more grounded claim that she is the chief monarch of a thieving, raping, genocidal empire. Again, just... A very, a very brief history lesson because clearly a lot of people fucking need it. So let's just take ourselves to the Statue of Westminster, sometimes referred to as the Statue of the Commonwealth, 1931. 
So just to inform everyone, so Queen Elizabeth II came into power in 1952 after the, the death of her father, King George VI. So passed on the 11th of December 1931, the statute increased the sovereignty of the self-governing domains of the British Empire from the United Kingdom, also bound them all to seek each other's approval for changes to monarchical titles and the common line of succession. The statute was effective either immediately or upon ratification. It thus became a statute or a statutory embodiment of the principles of equality and common allegiance to the Crown set out in the Balfour Declaration of 1926. As the statute removed nearly all of the British Parliament's authority to legislate for the dominions, it had the effect of making the dominions largely sovereign nations in their own right. It was a crucial step in the development of the dominions as separate states. So what we see basically in a nutshell is that the empire came to an official end in 1931 and it became a commonwealth, a commonwealth between increasingly sovereign democratic nations. And again, just to hammer home the point, so between 1931 and 1997, we saw a complete hemorrhaging of once, I guess you could say, of once dependent states. We, we being the royal we for Britain, had lost or completely gave up these these dependent states, we'd gave up our empire by 1931 and throughout until, 19, until 1997 with the Passover of Hong Kong to China, which ironically may not have been a good idea in retrospect, but we continue on. So just to hammer home, let's think, if the Queen is this racist, imperialistic, absolutist monarch, then surely she would have just been acquiring more colonies and more land. But, but let's look at what actually happened. So from 1919, we have Afghanistan, which gained independence from the British Empire. We have Antigua and Barbuda, which in 1981 gained independence from the British Empire. We have the Bahamas, which gained independence from the British Empire in 1973. We have Bahrain, which gained independence in 1971. Barbados, which gained independence in 1966. Belize, which gained independence in 1981, Botswana, which gained independence from the Empire in 1966, Brunei, which gained independence in 1984, Cyprus, which gained independence in 1960, Dominica, which gained independence from, again, the imperialistic British Empire in 1978, we have Egypt, which gained independence in 1922, Eswatini, which gained independence in 1968, Fiji in 1970, Gambia in 1965, Ghana in 1957, Grenada in 1974, and the list goes on and on and on and on. Again, there's probably over 50 countries that gained independence from 1931 to 1997 with the eventual Passover of Hong Kong to China. If, if the Queen is this radical imperialist, then she's fucking awful. You don't lose your entire empire. By being an imperialist, you lose your empire, quote-unquote, by giving it up. Again, there's this revisionist history that the British Empire was this awful, despicable, racist, imperialistic empire. And definitely, large, there are large grains of truth in all of that. Britain did hoard and acquire a vast empire, and there was endemic racism. But we also seen the very first seeds of change and of, I guess you could say, moral development in the West. Again, Britain, the British Empire, was the first sovereign nation to outlaw slavery in 1807. Again, it was one of the first nations to encourage other nations like Portugal and Sweden and the Dutch throughout the 1820s and 1830s to also give up their slave trades. But none of this is consistent with the narrative that we live in this awful imperialistic empire. We can't accept nuance or moral ambiguity because as the, the, the British Empire is morally ambiguous. You can find sin and you can find virtue if you if you care to look, if you care to analyse history. But these people don't. 
and I think there's a there's a great little passage from Peter Hitchens in the Abolition of Britain, which I'll just read out very quickly. So he writes, The final days of Imperial Britain are bracketed appropriately enough by the funerals of an old man and of a beautiful young woman, the first of Sir Winston Churchill, reached into a past of grandeur and certainty, while the second of Diana, Princess of Wales, foreshadowed a future of doubt and decline. The two events were different in every possible way, except that both were unmistakably British. The dead warrior was almost 90, full of years and ready to die. He represented the virtues of courage, fortitude and endurance. He was picturesque rather than glamorous, and his death was expected. The lost princess was snatched from life in the midst of youth, beauty and glamour. Her disputed virtues, founded on suffering, real or imagined, and appealed to more the outcasts and the wounded than to dutiful plain heart of England. Yet the funerals of such people, however different they may be from one another, are especially good moments at which to take the temperature of the nation, far better than general elections. And I think we see that exactly here, that if we're looking at the temperature of the nation, if this is indeed a, a moment of historical clarity, then what we see is largely a conflict between those that are able to appreciate some of the virtues of what the Queen in this honorific title may have symbolised. Again, I think we can argue about the importance of the monarchy, but when we look at what the Queen symbolised that wasn't endemic racism, it was, again, a life of amoral, or not amoral, of apolitical, instruction of really in many ways a counterbalance to the the kind of radical political forces we find ourselves in and again you have to wonder that a lot of people argue that the the monarchy is undemocratic but then again look at look at countries like America where you have a republic you have seemingly only democratic forces in play which is obviously not true but that's the illusion we're fed. And you look at America and you see how just absolutely polarised and radicalised it's become. And it, it just appears to be two, two mobs at war. And again, to what extent does a monarchy perhaps counterbalance the, the tyranny of majority? And I think that's an interesting question that we should consider. Uh, we, we like to think of, of democracy as this absolute virtue and it's definitely the path the path to prosperity but it can clearly go astray and what safeguards should we have in place to, to curb its worst excesses and I don't think a monarchy is the worst safety net or safeguards against these excesses but again if you've liked this video please consider giving it a like and uh, contribute to the Patreon if you've enjoyed this content and if you want to see other content on a channel like this. And thank you for watching. Take care, guys.